Today we'll be talking about poliomyelitis. Uh, my name is Gabby Florick. So the common name for poliomyelitis is obviously polio or sometimes referred to as infantile paralysis. It is a member of the enterovirus subgroup um, of the family Piconerviridae. It is an icosahedral non-enveloped small particle. Um, it's also an etherin sensitive virus with an RNA genome and it consists of this RNA genome enclosed within a capsid. There are three serotypes of uh, the wild poliovirus and wild, wild polioviruses are just those that occur naturally. Um, this is P1, P2, and P3. They're each distinguished by their slightly different capsid proteins and um, Type 1 and type 3 continue to circulate in the endemic areas, however, P2 has been completely eliminated in the wild. This virus enters through the mouth, and the multiplication is at the site of the implantation at the pharynx and in the gastrointestinal tract. Um, it survives in high, uh, acidic pH solutions because it uh, can survive here in the stomach. Um, the virus is present in the throat and the stool before the onset of illness, and basically this virus attaches to a plasma membrane protein, and then it's thus invaded into the local lymphoid tissue, and it enters the bloodstream, which then can enter the CNS and affect um, the cells there. There are basically three types. Um, there's abortive, non-paralytic, and paralytic polio. Abortive is uh, characterized by a low-grade fever, a sore throat, diarrhea, just typical symptoms, and uh, recovery is um, in less than a week. Um, non-paralytic polio is characterized by stiffness of the neck, the back, and or the legs, and they usually last about two to 10 days, um, but it's also followed by a complete recovery. Paralytic polio, however, um, includes the loss of superficial reflexes, increased deep tendon reflexes, severe muscle aches and spasms in the limbs, um, or flaccid paralysis. And after your temperature returns to normal, the paralysis tends to stop. However, if there's weakness or paralysis still present um, 12 months after the onset of illness, it's usually permanent. There are three main types of paralytic polio, um, spinal, bulbar, and bulbospinal polio. Spinal polio is um, the most um, prevalent type, and in 1969 to 79, it accounted for 79% of the paralytic cases. It basically just um, is the, the viral invasion of the motor neurons um, in the anterior horn cells of the spinal column and this is responsible for the movement of the muscles so it just damages that and it damages the motor, motor neuron ganglia there. The bulbal polio um, was accounted for about 2% of cases in 1969 to 79 and this invades and destroys the um, bulbar region of the, of the brain stem. Um, and the bulbal spinal polio is just basically a combination of the two and this accounted for 19% of cases during this time. Here you can see um, this girl's deformed legs and this boy wearing braces to help um, with, the, with the polio. So um, humans are the only known reservoir of polio virus. Um, the transmission is person to person via the fecal oral route. It's extremely infectious and people are most infectious from 7 to 10 days before and after the onset of symptoms, but the polio virus um, can be present in the stool for about 3 to 6 weeks. The incubation period for non-paralytic is around 3 to 6 days, and for the paralytic, it's about 7 to 21 days. Um, up to 72% of the polio infections in infants are asymptomatic, and children and infants are um, the main um, people who uh, contract this virus. So poliovirus can be tested in three main ways, um, recovered from the stool, serology, and cerebral spinal fluid. Taking it from the stool is the most common. Um, the serology, it can be an effective way, but they have to catch the uh, virus like in the earlier stages and test it. And cerebral spinal fluid, it's really an uncommon way to test for the disease, but it basically um, it results in like a more white blood cell count um, and mild, mildly elevated um, proteins. But like I said, they rarely ever recover it from the uh, CSF. So there is a vaccine for polio. Um, there's two types, there's an IPV and an OPV. The inactivated poliovirus vaccine um, 
is the the way that the U.S. Uh, vaccinates people. Um, there's two forms licensed in the U.S. However, the IPOL Sanofi Pasteur is actually the type that's distributed. Um, it was licensed in 1955, and um, it, inc it it contains all three serotypes of the polio vaccine virus. It's um, administered in subcutaneous or intramuscular injection, and it should be administered four times throughout a child's life, so at two months, at four months, at um, six to 18 months, and at four to six years. The OPV is actually not available in the U.S. It used to be um, in 1963, the trivalent OPV was licensed and basically replaced the IPV um, use. It was the vaccine of choice. However, in 2000, the U.S. got rid of it. Um, basically, what happened was the OPV leads to the VAP, which is a virus-associated paralytic polio, because this um, vaccine contains live strains of the three serotypes. So basically... This VAP um, accounted for about 154 out of 162, so about 95% of cases of paralytic polio in 1980 to 1999. So the, um, the U.S. just uh, got rid of it and they don't use it anymore. Both are very effective. Um, OPV, three doses produces immunity in about 95% of people. The IPV... Um, at least 99% are immune following three to three doses, so they're both really effective, but like I said, the IPV is um, used here in the U.S. There have been um, greatly a decline in, in cases in the U.S. Um, since vaccination in the U.S., the number of cases has declined from more than 20,000 cases in 1952 to fewer than, I think, it was 100 cases in the mid-1960s. The last documented uh, transmission of the wild polio virus in the U.S. was 1979, and during, at this time, the Pan American Health Organization had the goal to eliminate it from the Western Hemisphere by 1990, and since 1991, there was an indigenous case reported from Peru, but that was the last case since. And then the World Health Assembly wanted to er uh, globally eradicate it by 2000. Although they didn't achieve this, it has... Um, like substantially decreased. Um, it, it went from about 350,000 cases in 1988 to uh, 223 in, in 2012 and from 125 countries to about three countries. And type 2 has been completely eradicated with the last case in India in 1999. So here you can see that in 1888 it used to be very prevalent um, in the world but now it's only in three countries so they've done a really good job. There's unfortunately no cure, but the focus is on increasing the comfort, so bed rest, pain relievers, portable ventilators to assist their breathing, um, physical therapy, and you can see here um, braces or crutches um, to help uh, the debilitating effects of polio. Thank you.